Hey friends, Liron here. Welcome to another How to Draw video. Say hi to my uh, cute little assistant, Chipotle. Um, in this video, what we're going to do is take a black and white image, the bottom one here, and sort of recreate it in color by simply matching the values that we see. Uh, we'll get to learn, hopefully, that the color itself doesn't matter this much. It's more about the values. Um, so let's get to it. Okay, um, so I have both my paper here and the original picture and hopefully you can see this. Now I apologize in advance because due to the angle of the camera some things may get a little um, skewed which is fine. You'll still hopefully get the essence of this lesson. I'm beginning by drawing the actual shape of that um, building here. I'm beginning usually with the line that appears to me to be the most prominent. In this case, it's this one. And from there on, I just go and um, compare its length to other lines length and just take it from there. So basically what we have here is this line to the side. Um, it's about the same um, length as this one, perhaps um, a bit shorter. So we'll add now the line here to the bottom and they're about 90 degrees here. And that way you just start to build it up. Um, this line here is about the same height as the one on the left. Now we have the roof here coming at an angle. Angles is definitely something that you need to sort of practice getting right. And what I think I'll do, because the drawing itself is not a focus of this video, is actually go ahead and um, go into time lapse, just burst through all the drawing process and get to the actual painting process, which is what's interesting here. So let me do that and I'll be back soon. Okay, friends, I think uh, we have all the details we need here, like the key components. I got, of course, that center uh, building and some of these thingies here, it looks like uh, bamboo uh, branches that are kind of used for uh, construction. Maybe it's pipes, I'm not sure, but they will help us create a nice contrast here with the, with the dark ground. So we will need to sort of carefully paint them. Uh, we do have this uh, fence made of rocks, these few pipes also thrown around, and the houses here in the background, and the far off background we have this mountain shape. Um, that's pretty much it. Now what we're going to do is take out the colors and begin just observing one object at a time and matching the value. So if we're looking, for example, on the entire building as a whole, we can see that it's a bit uh, brighter than its environment. And this is the same goes for these ones here in the background. Uh, hopefully you can see them here. Yes, you can. Um, and also for these bamboo uh, sticks, they're also pretty much uh, lighter than the surrounding as well as if you notice in the building itself you have this very dark side here of the roof and also the darker area here at the bottom. Um, also something important to take into account here is the windows in this angle are no more than just slits um, because it's also skewed due to the perspective. If we would turn that wall we will see the actual uh, windows from the front like like this. But then when we uh, go at an angle, we can only see them as small slits 
and there may be perhaps there's side like this because we're looking at it at such a such an angle such an extreme angle so this is something important to make note of uh, let's take out the colors and begin the coloring process so we will now get into painting this um, I'll be using two brushes, uh, one that has a fine tip and it's actually an outdoors kind of brush that you can uh, take with you and paint whenever, wherever you want because it has um, an, like a uh, water sort of space to just fill it in and you can use it wherever you go without uh, using a container or a bottle. And the other one is a new brush I bought that I really like. It's a Princeton size 12 is what it says. I'm no expert in brushes, but I really liked it as opposed to my previous one, which was basically terrible. So we will begin. It doesn't really matter where. Usually in watercolors, you do tend to go from um, light to dark. And I think this will be a nice approach here. So first, let's look at the building itself. What I'll do now is mix uh, perhaps some yellow tone here it really doesn't matter the color itself remember it's more about the values so what i'm doing now is just mixing this um, very bright yellow tone and because the building itself is relatively bright i am going to use a bright color now i want to make it a bit more interesting so i will add in perhaps some um, blue just to cancel out some of the yellow and you see you get this nice grayish tone here and I'll be using that tone to paint all of the building actually then just everything maybe I'll just skip the roof but all of it can have this color here a big challenge when just starting out is actually the accuracy of uh, when you're filling up spaces like this. Um, this is something you sort of need to get the hang of. Some angles are easier to to get the, the accuracy right. For example, now it will be very hard for me to get this line right. So I'll be very careful. Try not to mess it up too much. But even if you do, it's not that big of a deal, I find. so. So in terms of matching the value here, I think I've done a good job. You can see it's pretty uh, close, I'd say, to that of the, the drawing. It's really bright. And again, the color itself doesn't matter. Um, next, what we're going to do is start working on the roof. So the front side of the roof has a darkness that is quite similar to the entire building, perhaps a bit darker. I will use a red color here for the roof. So I'm mixing a bit of red. Now, when I'm mixing it, I will make it a little stronger. Now, I recommend using a sort of a test paper here. Let's see if I can get one real quick. Because I used most of the up. So, okay, just another piece of paper that you can test the color in advance and see how, uh, how it, it is before you actually apply it to the paper. So I can see it's still pretty bright. I do want to add some more um, color into it and perhaps even a darker tone of red. I think this is good. We can just apply that color here. Let's test again. Yeah, it seems good. Uh, we'll gently apply it to this part of the roof. I can use my finer tip, but I already began, so we'll just continue with that and use it later for the finer details. And I'm going in again over some of the first parts that I made, just to make them a bit darker. By sort of just touching with the brush, you can add a little more darkness to it. And now that's enough, I think. I did get it quite a bit uh, darker than I think I even expected. The next thing we want to get is that left part of the roof that's quite darker. So I'm cleaning my brush, getting all the water out of it. And now I'll be using uh, burnt sienna together with some red. And I will make this significantly darker here. 
because the tone is much darker. So I'll try and get more of the watercolor itself here and use less water. And of course, I'll test it here. So it's um, significantly darker than this part, but I don't think it will be dark enough. What we're going to do is apply it anyway, and then just if necessary, we can always go over it with an additional layer and have it uh, more matching to the tone we try to get here. So very carefully, I'm applying this color here. And also to the bottom here, it has the exact same tone, so I'll just add it in here too, as a shadow under the roof itself. Dip some more of those inside here. And I think we got it significantly darker than the front side here. So I'll now clean my brush. And we can move on to the next part here. I think the next part we can do is the windows. We want to get them nice and dark. I'll try just to create an interesting contrast here. I'll use a very dark blue. I'm using an ultramarine blue. Again, color really doesn't matter. You just pick whatever you want whatever seems nice to you. And I may try and cancel it out a bit by adding a complementary color, just like I did before with the yellow ochre type of color. Test it out. I need it to be darker, much darker. Um, I will switch to my finer tip and use that to apply it the paint to the windows. Now what's good about this is that the color should definitely be darker, but that's fine because if you pay close attention to how the windows look, there are two levels of darkness. So the first level is this uh, outer side of the windows and the other level is the right side, the inner one, which is uh, significantly darker. You can see this here if I get this closer. You can see there's, there are two levels. Hopefully you can see this. Um, so, let's just put it here like this. Um, we're going to, this was the first layer and we can now, it dries relatively quickly, we can just go ahead and mix a darker color and use that for the darker parts here. So I'm just adding some Payne's Gray and perhaps some black even, just to make it a little darker. And I'm still preserving the bluish quality it had. Test it out perhaps even darker. Yep, that's good. So using this new tone, I'll darken the rightmost part here. Here you can barely see it on the leftmost window. And now I messed up a bit, yeah, I got out of some of the lines, but that's fine. Uh, we're keeping it mostly very light here, so um, you also see I'm not going as dark as in the reference yet. I may go over it um, again and make it a little darker. Okay, now we can see that the bottom part of the building is a bit darker, so we want to get that in. To get it darker, I'll just add some of the yellow that I used previously to this uh, darker mixture here, just to have it a similar um, color, and add some water in. 
Now we get this nice uh, darker gray. Let's test it out and see how it works. Okay, so it is darker than the original tone. Uh, I think I will add a bit more black to it, just to make it a bit darker. And we can go ahead and apply this to all of the bottom of the building. If you're not sure and you're afraid to go too dark, remember that you can always uh, use a brighter tone than you think you'll need, a brighter value, sorry, and later on just add another layer to it. But if you go too dark, that's a different story and it requires some uh, more complex techniques. You'll need to lift some of the paint and it's better to be safe sometimes, just go with the a little bit of a, too much of a bright tone and later on correct it. So that's basically it for the lower part. And now, because of the shape of the roof, we do get this interesting shadow here. So what I think I'll do is apply a second layer that will indicate this shadow. I'll just take some of the darker tone I took earlier and mix it in with the red from earlier, the red and burnt sienna, and see how that works. Um, let's test it out here. So it's still very bright. I'll take some more black, add it into the mixture. And I'll add some more of the red. And some more of the burnt sienna from earlier. Good. Some more black. And I think we got a significantly darker tone here. Yeah, that's good. So now what I'll do is basically go over the existing layer as well as shade just below this front side of the roof. Going over the existing layer and adding a shadow to this part of the roof. Now, as long as the paint is wet, you can still work with it. Um, in this case, I will try and blend it in a little. This is something that needs to be done, done rather quickly. So I'm drying the brush, cleaning it and drying it, and just go going over the edges here. And you can see it sort of blends it in. Um, not perfectly, but it does uh, blend it in a little. And I will uh, later on mix a darker color just to emphasize it even more. For now, I do see that we there are some shapes on the front side of the roof that I want to get in here uh, that are darker. So I'll use that same darker tone here and indicate those shapes just by creating very light even darker. Let me get it darker here. Yeah, that's better. Just by making these quick strokes, thin strokes. Yep, seems like that's enough. Um, now let's mix slightly darker tone here. I'm sorry if I'm obstructing the view here. It's a challenging angle and I still can't get all the lines just <laughs> using whichever angle I want. And I will make it a little brighter and go ahead and layer this on top as well because the contrast does need to be stronger here in this area. Now that looks better. Now you can actually see the difference in tones here. And by using a lighter tone, I can get some more shading here, just at the bottom. Okay, um, let's say I think this is enough for the building now. What I will do is sort of get some of the details on the background quickly so the building itself can pop out a little. Um, I don't want this video to be super long, so I'll go into time lapse now, get all the background and some of the land area here, 
and we'll continue that with some finer like final details and wrap the video up. Okay, friends, I'm just uh, adding some final details here. Um, you hopefully can see that even with my bad technique for filling up the background, um, you can kind of get a sense of um, a sense of the contrast between the building and the all of the background. Um, it may be a little more contrasted here. And I may try to correct it, but that's the gist of it. Um, I really worked a bit differently here. Um, haven't necessarily gone from light to dark completely. Here I'm adding some shadows under the roofs. And this will be the only means of indicating the roof, actually, in this far uh, background here. Uh, what I did is basically add a few more details to the stone wall here and to the houses in the background. Made this background a little darker just to make the building pop more. And added the lines here to indicate the bamboo sticks, their sort of pattern. Um, anyway, I hope this video helped you. Um, now that I look at it, it's like a really rough... <laughs> Uh, roughly painted background. Hopefully I'll get to do something a little smoother next time. Uh, if this video helped you, um, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting many more watercolor videos um, and some other things. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you uh, soon. Have an awesome week.